my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. Welcome back to another episode of Hard Times where I explore food and recipes from times of hardship. So today I'm going to be making pine needle tea. So this recipe, unlike many of the others that I've done previously, doesn't come from a particular period of recent modern history, meaning post-World War II or the Great Depression. This is a very old recipe for pine needle tea to treat scurvy. So scurvy was a very common ailment among sailors who spent a long period of time on ships without enough vitamin C. So once they figured out the whole vitamin C scurvy connection, they started packing provisions that had sources of vitamin C so sailors wouldn't come down with scurvy. So I found a couple of historical references that talk about using pine needle tea to treat for scurvy. The earliest one being from 1536. It was written by Jacques Cartier, who said that the Native Americans actually knew to use the pine needles and create a tea to treat for scurvy. I personally do not have scurvy, which I'm grateful for, but I do have a beautiful eastern white pine in my backyard, so I went and harvested a branch and I'm going to make some tea. So while my water is coming up to a boil, I want to talk a little bit about plant identification. Now not all pine trees are created equal. There are definitely some pine species or non-pine species that you do not want to take and make tea out of. Some can be quite poisonous, some can make you sick, so we have to make sure we have the right tree from which we are harvesting. For example, there are trees that are not true pines, like Norfolk pine, yews. You should not use those at all. Cypress is another non-true pine that you should not use. Other varieties that you want to avoid include balsam pine, lodgepole pine, and ponderosa. Stay away from those. So how do we know that we have an eastern white pine? Well, let me show you. So I just harvested this branch from my tree. It is beautiful, love it. And this is how we do it. Pines are very interesting. Each one of these needles, as we call them, are actually leaves. So if we look carefully on a pine tree, you'll see that they're in bundles. And so one of these bundles is called a fascicle. So let me pull that apart and show you. And within that fascicle, we count how many needles there are. One, two, three, four, five. So five needles in one fascicle is an indication that this is an eastern white pine. Of course, you also have to know your location. I am located in Rhode Island, so I'm on the east coast. Therefore, the identification of eastern white pine makes sense. I'm also in the northern area. I'm not down in the south. In the south, you wouldn't find this tree. Also, when you're doing plant identification, you should also know the basic gestalt of the thing that you're looking at. So eastern white pines are very tall trees, generally speaking, if they're mature. So you have to look at the kind of general picture of the entire plant and see if it matches up with the identification factors of what you're looking for. Another part of plant identification that's really important is the fruit. In this case, it would be the pine cone. Does it look like the eastern white pine? Also, if you're looking at flowers, flowers are very, very important identifiers of plants as well. Now that I know what I have and what I have is correct, I'm going to harvest half cup of these fascicles or needles. So let's get these little bundles. Just gonna grab them off the branch. Dun, 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 dun. Also, for those of you that have children in your lives that like to climb trees and get pine pitch or pine tar on their hands, you know what's a really great way to get it off? A little bit of oil. I find coconut oil works really well. It's really emollient, it's kind of thicker, and yeah, that rubs the pine pitch right off your hands. It's great. Okay, so I would say that's about a half a cup. That is more than a half a cup. Now I'm gonna add my needles to the water. Mm. All right, so I'm just gonna let this kind of steep here for 20 minutes and then I'll come back to taste it. <laughs> Be right back. Okay, so I am back with my pine needle tea. It has been steeping for 20 minutes and it does smell piney. It smells very nice actually. Now, if you look here, the pine needles have changed color. They've lost their bright green vividness. So you can see the color of the tea. I'm gonna pour some in this mason jar. Huh. I was curious to see if it would have any color. And it looks like it's got a little bit of a tinge to it, but it's pretty clear. It smells great though. It smells like freshly cut lumber. We've been doing some building out back and that's what it smells like, just freshly cut two by fours. <laughs> All right, let's give this a taste. Cheers. Hmm. 
Mmm. And it tastes like two by fours too. <laughs> not that I've ever eaten two by fours, but that's what it tastes like and that's what it smells like. That freshly cut two by four smell, that delicious, wonderful pine smell that inspires building. It's a wonderful smell and flavor. It reminds me of great beginnings and new construction. It's delicious. It tastes resinous and piney. It's not tannicky at all. It's not bitter. It's not sour either. I was wondering if it'd be sour at all because it's supposed to contain enough vitamin C to combat scurvy. I was wondering if it would taste acidic. It doesn't. It just smells and tastes of pine, but it's much subtler. Somehow I thought pine would be very, very assertive, aggressive, overly strong, too resinous, almost hoppy, but it's not. It's very nice actually. And I think that has to do with the proportion of water to pine needles that you use. So I use three cups of water to half cup of needles and it's a very pleasant tea. I would imagine this on a camping trip would be absolutely delicious, particularly if it's really, really cold. I imagine this would taste different using different varieties. Say for example, if you were to make spruce tip tea, that would have a different flavor. Maybe more resinous, maybe not. I don't know, I have to find myself some spruce. <laughs> Mm, I think this would be really good with a shortbread biscuit. A little shortbread cookie in there. Mmm, <laughs> that's pretty stinking good. Alrighty, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. It really helps me out. You can follow me on social media to see what's going on in my life. And yeah, subscribe, like, and I shall see you in the next video. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. Piney, 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 piney.